gentlemen, main events, Panics Promotions, Holden Productions, and the Casino Association of New Jersey, along with your undisputed, undefeated King of Beers, Budweiser. This Bud's for you. Present the featured bout of the evening, 10 rounds, pardon me, 12 rounds of boxing in the heavyweight division. This bout is sanctioned by the New Jersey State Athletic Control Board, Boxing Commissioner Larry Hazard Sr. The three judges assigned to ringside to score this bout on a 10-point must system are Frank Brunette, Al DeVito, and Eugene Grant. And when the bell rings, the man in charge of the action, referee Mills Lane. And now, ladies and gentlemen, from the convention hall here in Atlantic City, New Jersey, uh, let's get ready to rumble! Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing the black trimmed with red and weighing in at 227 pounds. He comes to us tonight from Jay, Oklahoma and brings a professional record of 45 victories against only two defeats with one draw and 39 of his victories are by way of knockout. In his career, he holds victories over Razor Ruddick, Pink Lynn Thomas, and Big George Foreman. And he has captured two championship belts from the WBO and the IBC. Ladies and gentlemen, introducing a two-time world heavyweight champion, Tommy the Duke Morrison. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the red corner. He's wearing black, trimmed with gold and red letters. He weighed in officially at 241 pounds. In 1988, he captured Olympic gold by defeating Razor Riddick Bow. And as a professional, he now has a record of 27 victories with only one defeat. And he has reigned as the world heavyweight title holder, a title he is on a mission to regain. Ladies and gentlemen, presenting from East London, England, the former heavyweight champion of the world, Lennox Okay. Okay. All right. Tommy. Morrison. All right. Listen up. If he goes right here, Tommy, right here is going to be all right. We've already gone through all the instructions. Expect a tough, clean fight. Protect yourself at all times. Any questions here? Any questions here? Let's get it on. These fighters are not so much at a crossroads as at an intersection, an intersection without any stoplights, and everybody is looking for a big collision. Yesterday when we met with them, Lennox Lewis made a big point of telling us that he has learned since the McCall fight how to ease his way into a bout, not looking for the big punch from the outset. Tommy Morrison has made a big point of saying, I don't think I can outbox Lennox Lewis. I don't even think it's worth trying. But he did outbox George Foreman a couple of years ago, and there are some of us who still expect to see some of those in and out tactics. I think Morrison made a very good statement because with Lennox using this jab like he is, it's going to be very difficult for Morrison to outbox him. The weight that Lennox has added looks good. He is not too big. He's gained weight in all the right places. It must be mostly in his legs because I cannot tell from his upper body. His upper body looks good. Lewis trying to land the right cross has missed a couple of them so far. Morrison not able to open up and throw much yet as Lewis is keeping him at bay with the jab. You look at the size and strength of Lennox Lewis in there, Roy Jones. He presents as formidable a picture as there is in the heavyweight division. Yes, he's a very intimidating pitcher just looking at him for a person like Morrison. What I've noticed early in this fight already, guys, is that Lewis's jab is much more authoritative than we're used to seeing it. He's usually pawing it out there. He's trying to put some steam behind it now. Yes, but he can't get lackadaisical with it and slow it down because this is the best punch in boxing to counter a jab. Hard right 
hand by Tommy Morrison as he steps in and gets it across the top of Lewis's left shoulder. Which, which Morrison just tried to do. Lewis's old and most think bad habit is to leave the jab laying out there and measure his man with it. And the reason that they think this is a bad habit is because the best time to hit a guy, like I said, is when his jab is extended. More than two minutes into the round, Tommy Morrison has landed two counter right hands against Lennox Lewis's jab. But Lewis's jab has dominated the action so far. Morrison's left was blocked against Lewis's arms. The right hand got through again. If I were in Lewis's corner, I would be telling him to throw the straight right to the body zone. That would move Tommy Morrison's hand, and that would create an opening for the right hand to the face. Lewis finding an inviting target for the jab so far. Has missed every time with the right hand, but Morrison is very aware of Lewis's right and flinches away from it when Lennox throws. Tommy has developed a small swelling under his right eye from that jab already. Another right hand miss as the round comes to a close, and a relaxed Morrison allows himself to go to his knees. Lewis pushing him on the back of the head. Keep working the jab. You want to find him. He's, shot. He's really cautious. He felt the power, and he's not coming in. He's staying back. Just keep working the jab. Everything will happen. He may be getting away from him, but sooner or later, you'll get close enough. You'll figure out instead of taking it over, you get close enough. Maybe you take it right on up underneath. But keep working the left hand. He can't get his attack going because he's felt the power of the jab. So let's work on the jab. Everything will fall in place. It's a little higher time. After you throw a combination, you make sure you come out low. Tell him out, you're going to see that right hand coming all night long. All right? Let's take it away from him by using more jabs, more sevens. Double up on your seven, look for the body. Double up on your seven, look for the body. A little more speed. Lewis is trying to do two things. One, you see his right hand is high. He's ready for the great left hook that Morrison does have. And secondly, it's that jab he's trying to force an opening rather than merely wait for an opening as he has often done in the past. There he was holding the left hand out there as he tried to land the right hand over the top, but he threw 52 snapping jabs in round number one. And that kind of activity can only be a product of Emmanuel Stewart's reworking of Lennox Lewis's fighting style. That's the right hand that Lennox throw right then that I'm saying he should throw to the body. That way, later in the fight, if he starts to tire, Morrison will tire too from these body shots. If he punches to the body at all, Roy, it's a big step forward. One thing we've noticed in Lewis's past fights, he seems to forget constantly to go to the body. <laughs> Morrison seems to be forgetting that same thing right now, though. He should be working Lewis's body as well. He's the shorter fighter here. For him to have an advantage, he should throw more body shots. That can bring Lewis's hands down. Morrison almost sneaked the left hook past Lewis's right hand. It was partially blocked. Lennox Lewis beating Tommy Morrison to the punch with the jab. Tommy just hasn't gotten his jab going because Lennox's left hand keeps coming out. And if I were Tommy, I wouldn't throw many jabs at Lewis because Lewis is looking down over Tommy's left hand. If he throws a jab and leaves it out a second too long, Lewis will counter. Thunder with the right hand over the top. One thing I did like about Tommy is that in between the first and second round in the corner, Tommy was breathing long stride, and that's a good body shot. Good body shot by Morrison, but he goes down, so score it a knockdown for Lewis. I thought it was a left hook. The fighters had their backs to us, and we couldn't tell. But if it was, it was a very short left hook. Fascinating exchange because Morrison seemed to be doing damage to the body, and all of a sudden, he was on the canvas. It was a counter left hook. Right between his combinations, his big punches, which is what I told you earlier about the big punches that he throws. That's what happens to Morrison. Lewis just misses with a right hand, and now there's blood at Tommy Morrison's right eye. So the little left hook from Lennox Lewis that put Morrison down 
has apparently also cut his eye. Both Martin fighters more aggressive now. Marston needs to move his head more. He's making himself a steel target for Lewis. Lewis looking down can hit a steel target much, much easier than Tommy can looking up. Both fighters need more head movement. Right now, Morrison is the one who needs it most. Round two coming to a close. There was a knockdown in the round for Lewis. This is the best Lewis we've seen in a while. Much more measured, less wild, better footwork. Much better footwork. Okay. They call it a little left hook there. All right, look, listen to what I'm saying. Let's, we're letting him fight his fight here because we're at the end of his punches. Okay. All right, this round, we got to pick up the pace. You got to start stalking. All right, let's we check out and, and see that what, uh, left hook that we thought was delivered inside. If it is, it's one of the most impressive punches we've ever seen Lewis land, although it just landed high on the head. He wasn't even throwing those kinds of punches on most occasions before looking to throw that short left hook. They get a little lower. One thing well, about right, the combination right. that enabled right. a Marston to be hit was that he threw a double right hand, which left the right side of the face wide open for too long of a period of time. In the corner. In the corner. Lewis also has that right hand up around his head like a gate trying to block Morrison's way in with it. There's another good left hook by Lennox Lewis and he's, as he goes right after the, the eye that he bloodied in the last round. The way he's throwing the hook is almost as though he's been watching some Roy Jones tapes or something. It's not that good, Roy. Morrison landed a straight right after the opening exchange, but Lewis still able to keep Morrison out at the end of his jab for the time being. Lewis must be careful when he right, throw the wild money. punch then. He shouldn't get wild because that's Tommy's game. Tommy needs to throw the wide punches because he's reaching up. The knockdown, of course, marked the 11th time in the decade of the 90s that Tommy Morrison's been down. There's another good left hook for Lennox Lewis. And if Morrison keeps standing out there and letting Lennox dictate the pace, you can count for a 12th knockdown because he will go down again. It's crazy to stand out there on the end of a tall man's punches. He has more leverage out there. It's harder for you to hit him from out there, and you're in his punching reach and he is not in yours. So how is Tommy going to get inside? He has to move his head and start trying to make uh, Lennox throw decent punches so he can slip them and get inside. Once he gets inside, he has to stay inside. That right there is not the place for Morrison to be. So, so far, he has not been able to slip Lewis's jab. He's eating it. And as long as that's the case, he won't get inside. Well, he, that, there he's inside. He can block the jab. Go in, but he can't throw two and three punch combinations because Lennox is doing something smart. He's punching between Morrison's punches, which is what I told you would be a problem for him. Lewis landed a downward canted right hand there. Not full power. If I were Morrison, I would be content with that right there, getting one body shot at a time, hoping to tie Lennox in the later round. Let's go. Mills Lane all the way here from Nevada tonight. If we get a chance later, we'll tell you exactly what's going on there. New Jersey State Athletic Commissioner Larry Hazard looking to nationalize officiating in the sport. He says bringing in a Nevada referee for this fight is one step in that direction. I can tell you one more thing that I can see. Boston is getting a little closer to Lennox. This I means that Lennox may be getting a little back tired back. in the leg department. Morrison, I thought, landed a big but grazing right in that exchange. Watch the heads in there. Both of that neck. Lewis, come on. Third round Close coming to a close. Yeah, Relatively cautious Tired. round for Lewis. you can do. I'm going to leave it up to you. If you want to, you can almost just walk him down. We're right inside on him now because you got control of him inside. Walk him down if you want to with short shots and keep making him move back. Take the rest of his strength. You don't have to worry about no shots. You can walk him down and stay with short shots there and push him back all while you're punching. 
Because your punches are much shorter than his punches are. Also. You got to make it happen, Tommy. You're high on me. You're high on me. I need you lower. I need you lower. You got to sit down on that hip, get the weight on the ball of the front foot. All right? Head movement as you're coming in. Constant head movement. Coming in, head movement? Yes. Low hips, ball of the foot. That's the way. Something, if you want to walk him down, just put your hands up tight and walk straight to him. He can't do shit. It's too much weight, too much strength. Break him down. Stewart's pretty confident in there, Roy. Yeah, but you never should underestimate a puncher such as Tommy Morrison. I wouldn't try to walk him down. I would sit there and box him just like Nelson's doing, keep him off balance with the jab, and just peck him until you set up a big shot. If you've been as successful as Lewis has been up to this point, why would you change it? Why wouldn't you just wait for the big one to come to you? It's almost like backing a cat into the corner if you put your hands up and walk him down. You're going to make him fight him much harder than he is doing right now. So yeah. about, there's a right hand by Morrison. He's got a mouse under his left eye, but he's starting to connect more and more frequently with those right hands as he steps inside. Body shot landed, uppercut partially blocked by Morrison. Lewis short with the right hand. Stands to reason that if Lewis listens to Stewart and elects to walk on in, he's going to give Morrison more opportunities. That's what I just said. It's almost going to be like backing a cat into a corner and making him have to fight. If you force Morrison to fight, you're going to get caught with some big sharp punches because he throws powerful sharp punches. Tommy taking punishment off the jab. More and more, it looks like Morrison was correct when he said there was no way he could outbox Lennox Lewis. Yes, and I said that at the top because if Lennox uses this jab like he's doing, then there's no chance of Morrison outboxing him. He should work on trying to counter that jab. All right, go, go. Lewis reaches forward and grabs Morrison. The Milt Slane gets him at, at the distance again, and Lewis landed a right hand. The crowd booed that move that Lennox made, but that was a smart move. Morrison had got just about in his own punching range, and Lennox was not in his punching range, so he grabbed him. Kind of ring awareness Lewis has not always shown in his career. You put this talent together with real knowledge, and you've really got something, but that's always been the case. Another thing I see here, Lennox jab is starting to feel, look like it's falling slightly. If it falls, he'll have to be very careful after it comes back. It's falling on the way back. If it falls, he'll have to be very careful of that right hand right there. And that's what Tommy just tried to do, countering over the jab with the right hand. All right, we'll step back. We'll step back clean. Here we go. Come on. Lewis landing more punches. Morrison maybe landing the harder shots, although there was another hard left hook by Lennox Lewis. He's never been noted as a left hooker. It's been his most effective blow tonight. Blood from the right eye of Morrison again after that left hook by Lewis. Morrison stepping in with the right. And lands a chopping right as the round comes to a close. Fang, Fang, try to get close, get your body weight on it. And lock, Tam, watch when you're pulling back because you're looking for the hook and he's trying to throw sneaky right hands at you. So you got to watch your both of them, okay? Let's punish you with the left hand this round. Try to bust him up real good with the left hand. Pursue this guy walking down, firing punches. You let him out too many times and you're trying to go high, right? You got to go low to high. Jab. Tommy Dad Morrison, throughout his career, has had a monumental problem being effective in the fifth round. It happens way too frequently to just be a statistical coincidence. Morrison seems to tire automatically at the end of four rounds. His trainer, Tommy Virgut, says to all intents and purposes, he's never won a fifth round in his career. And as the graphic showed you, his punch output normally goes way down in this stanza. It happened again earlier this summer against Razor Ruddock. Both of these fighters are very tired. The only thing is that Morrison is starting to swell and it's going to start, his eyes are starting to swell and this should start affecting his vision soon. So if he's going to make a move, he has to start making it now.
Harold Letterman. How do you have it scored so far? Jim, four rounds to nothing, 40 to 35, Lennox Lewis. I gave Lennox all four rounds. Certainly he deserves an extra point in round two for the knockdown. Lennox has shown me a great left jab, real, real good defense. Tommy's not getting through, and I think Vergetz is killing Mars and all that Vaseline. It's going in his eye. He can't see the punches coming. And right now, Lewis is landing combinations at will. When Morrison comes forward, Lennox simply jabs and then drops the right hand over. He's been very effective in the first minute of this round. Two things I see. One thing is that Morrison knows that the fifth round is not a good round for him. He's letting this mental game get to him. The second thing is that Lennox is not hitting Morrison's body. If he touches his body, he will knock him out. But Morrison is trying to fight Lewis the way he fought George Foreman, staying in, outside his range and then trying to fight and get inside in his own terms. But Lewis is just much faster than George, so he's having a real difficult time executing that plan. And not only that, if you stay out of Lennox's range and he has the longest arms, then that means you're that much further out of your own range. Morrison landed a left hook after Lewis's right hand, so both men did damage there. But Tommy Morrison is battered around both eyes and appears to be losing his vision as time goes on. Yes, but look at the facial expression. Morrison has almost an I give up facial expression. Lennox has an I'm about to take over now expression on his face. These things are, have a, a play a big role in a boxing ring because when you see a guy with that I give look, it gives you more confidence, gives you energy sometimes that you don't even have to want to get him out. Under a minute in round number four. Or check it, round number five, I should say. As has been the pattern throughout his career, Morrison has been largely dominated in this fifth round by Lewis. All those punches were blocked by Lennox Lewis's arms. And there's a monumental uppercut. Morrison went to one knee. Lane calls it a knockdown, correctly so. Morrison knew it, he went immediately to the neutral corner, and that right eye is looking pretty bad. This fight is basically over. Like I told you before, Morrison has that I give up look on him. Lennox knows it. Lennox is just going to keep coming. Lennox has done his homework on Morrison. He knows every combination that Morrison throws, and they're insane. So he cannot hit Lennox. Round five ends. Lennox Lewis, to this moment in the fight, has looked better than at any time in his career uh, since Halloween night 1992 when he clocked Ruddock in the second round. Uh, come on. I got this one. Uh -huh. I got the left one. All right. Give him a round, Bob. Give him a round. Yeah, we're give him a round. We just want to see how bad it is. Okay. Tommy, Tommy, listen to what I'm going to tell you now. You have got to take him into a war this round. Okay. Right? There's no more. We're not going to win by points on this. We're down. You got to get low, you got to stalk him, you got to take him into a wall. Okay, nice, tight, low, controlled combination. He's thrown a lot of long right hands, Lewis, in this fight, as we've often seen him. But it's that short one that Tommy Morrison didn't see that put him down. Like I said, Lennox has done his homework on Morrison. He's using some of Morrison's own combinations on him. That's Morrison's favorite combination that he dropped him with just then. Tommy, Tommy, some Virgin. Of his, Tommy take some of this grease off. Morrison's trainer sounds like he might stop the fight himself unless Morrison can do some serious damage in this off. round. Yes, right. right, he asked the doctor okay, to give time, him one more round when the doctor wasn't even thinking of it at that point. Yes, but he can sense the urgency on Morrison's face. Morrison has basically almost given up in this fight. He wants to go out and see can he land a big shot now. Oh, that's a terrific right hand shot by Lewis. That landed flush on Morrison's chin. Very flush. But let, Morrison just wants a chance to try for one more knockout. Then I think he knows that he's basically outclassed by Lewis. He'll make a statement here anytime. In pleading his own case, you might have heard Morrison say to the doctor, I've still got my left hook. By way of saying, listen, don't stop this thing too fast. I'm dangerous. But the left hook has not been a factor so far. Down goes Morrison again. And this is becoming a blowout. Morrison is too concer concerned about his seven. eye. He's letting his eye take him out okay. of the fight. Third knockdown of the night for Lewis. And Lennox begins to showboat just a little bit. Now he comes back to the jab, popping it and bringing it back the way you're supposed to. 
This is the round that Morrison stopped Ruddick after taking a terrible beating. Lane's getting very close to a stoppage here. You get that sense. Down goes Morrison again, and I wonder if Mills has seen it up. There is no three knockdown rule in effect. That's the fourth knockdown of the fight. And that'll do it. A terrific performance by Lennox Lewis. Defensively, he kept that right hand up so that he completely neutralized Tommy Morrison's outstanding left hook. KO victory, his march to regain the heavyweight championship continues. The winner, former heavyweight champion Lennox Lewis.